Hi Madrona students. I thought of you this week because we celebrated the spring equinox on March 19th. It's actually the earliest we celebrated spring equinox in over 120 years. We usually celebrate on March 20th or 21st. I thought it would be fun to revisit sun and earth lessons and tell you the story of solstices and equinoxes. So, as many of our sun and earth stories begin, we like to remember ancient peoples and think about what they might have observed long ago. As you know, they depended on the sun for their activities, for their livelihood, and so they paid especially close attention to what the sun was doing. And they would keep track of it and they would share their observations with those around them, much like you do. You share your ideas and what you observe with your friends and your family. Something that they most likely observed was that the sun would rise over certain landmarks. For example, they might have said something like, hmm, I'm noticing that the sun is rising over that pine tree, but in the last couple days, I've noticed that it's starting to rise over the dwelling over there. And they would have shared this with their friends and thought about it. And they would notice that on a couple days in the year, the sun would show, okay, it's rising a little to the north one day, a little to the north another day, a little to the north on the next day. But then there was a day when it stood still and would start rising a little to the south a little to the south, a little to the south. And they gave the name solstice to this day because in Latin, sol means sun and sistere means to stand still. Another phenomenon that they observed was that on two days of the year, there would be equal day and equal night. They gave the name equinox to these days Equinox is Latin for equal night. And so for the spring equinox, that's what we experienced. You remember when we talk about the sun and the earth, we talk about how the earth, represented by this sphere, has an imaginary line running through it called the axis. And the earth is tilted on its axis and the earth moves around its axis, it rotates, and each rotation is one day. And we talked about how the earth revolves around the sun, represented here by this lamp, and this movement around the sun as it's rotating every day, one revolution around the sun is what we have as one year. So it takes one year for our Earth to go all the way around the sun. And because of this movement, this rotation and revolution, and the tilt of the axis, we have unequal days and nights, and we have our seasons. So what's happening in the springtime? Let's talk about that. So you might remember when we talked about our winter solstice that um, the axis, is pointed away from the sun, right? In the Northern Hemisphere. So we live in the Northern Hemisphere. It's pointed, the axis is pointed away from the sun. So there is less light and energy getting to the Northern Hemisphere for less of the day. So that's why we have longer nights and that's why we have cooler temperatures. So that, that was winter, and now we're coming into spring. And what happens? Well, our axis, if you can imagine, it's hard to show through video, but it's kind of parallel to where the sun is. So the axis is not pointed to or away from the sun, but it's kind of parallel to the sun. And so that's how we have equal day and equal night for the spring equinox. And then in the summer, over here, you can see our axis is pointing towards the sun. So more of the northern hemisphere is exposed to the sun for more of the day. So we have warmer temperatures, we have longer days, 
and then back to fall where the axis is parallel to our sun and we have equal day and equal night for the fall equinox. And that happens every year and it's been happening for millions and millions of years. Our sun is rotating on its axis and revolving around the sun. If you want to try this at home, you just need a lamp like this with its shade off. Find a dark area of your house. Sometimes we do this demonstration in a closet or the laundry room where we can close all the doors and there are no windows and you can turn off all the lights. And then you turn on your light and you have your earth represented by a sphere of some sort. You can make it out of clay, paper mache, um, this one is styrofoam with a small crochet needle through it, knitting needle. And you can use this. Just make sure your earth is tilted and make sure that it's pointed north in your house and that your earth is rotating counterclockwise. And see if you can find the four seasons. If you have a globe, that would work too, but once again, make sure your axis is pointed um, north and that you're finding the four seasons around your sun. Can't wait to hear if you try this at home and I can't wait to hear all the things that you're experiencing for spring. And I look forward to hearing about it next week.